Welcome to the Lighthouse Conversations, a show featuring entrepreneurs and tastemakers from the worlds of art, culture, tech, and of course, food. I'm your host, Hasha Montasser. I'm joined today by celebrity TV chef, author, and restaurateur, Mohammed Orfali. Orfali had his breakthrough in 2011 when he joined Fatafit, the region's first dedicated food channel, which was launched by Lighthouse friend, Yusuf El Deep. Today, Orfali is the showrunner of the popular restaurant Orfali Bros, which he operates with his brothers, Wasim and Omar, both classically trained pastry chefs. They've won multiple awards since opening just a year ago, including ranking number six on the inaugural Mena's 50 best list and appearing in Dubai's inaugural Michelin Guides for the Big Gourmand Award. So I sat down with Orfali to unearth it all, his journey with Fatafit, how he found his food identity, so to speak, and of course, the burning question on everyone's mind. What makes a really good Molokheya? This is Muhammad, welcome. We're so happy to have you with us today. I am honored to have you on this podcast. Thank you. Likewise, Wallah, Hashem. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm, it's an honor to be with you. It is. Honestly, it's my honor. You are a friend, but also someone uh, really we, we are very proud of, as I told you the other night when we came to your lovely restaurant. And I want to start with probably the most important question, which is Molokheya. I feel we have to we have to start with Molokheya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we need to understand. Uh, we we were joking about Molokheya and uh, whether you have a Molokheya dish on your menu, whether you plan to have a Molokheya dish on your menu, or I'm just going to throw this out there: we can have and do a Molokheya dish for us. <laughs> that Why not? Us. Everybody wants Molokheya. So before yeah. we start the Molokheya wars, tell us your view on Molokheya. You know Molokheya. Uh it's an, sometimes an acquired taste. Yes, very much there so. Is, some people, they love it, they love it. Some people, like, they really, you know, they hated it. They're like, they never, like, even, like, they, they think to, to try Molokheya. I remember when myself, when I was a kid, I really don't like it. Why not? Because of the sliminess of the Molokheya. I really don't, like, feel like, oh, I want to eat Molokheya. And it's very strong flavors when it's come to, like, you know, the coriander garlic on it. And I don't understand it as a kid. So one of the things, one of the challenges was... You know, how I can take the Malukhiya and turn the look and look the, how it looks like, mm. okay? Mm. I don't know. I'm always thinking, like, why we eat the Malukhiya with chicken or, you know, sometimes rabbit, as like right. in, in Egypt, yeah, or, or with, with lamb. Because in, in Aleppo, we, we make it even yeah, sometimes yeah. With, with kebab. Yeah, yeah. With kebab stuff with, 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 yeah. with pie nuts. Yeah, meat of sorts or chicken. Or... And then, like... Some of them, they're making it green. Some of them, they're making it dried. Like, you know, Lebanon, Syria, they're always like, you know, Molokhiya for us should be like, you know, should be dried and should be like not slimy at all. Yeah, and ours is a soup. Yeah, they go to Egyptian side and, and Palestinian side, like it should be green and fresh. And if it's not slimy, is that something wrong with it, like as Egyptian? But at the end, the tasha, the coriander uh, and, and the garlic, that's like, you know, what's make Molokhiya different. So I felt like, you know, I think garlic coriander go more with fish, mm. more than, than chicken, more than, than uh, let's say, lamb. And one of my cooking shows, I did something called, where is the Molokhiya? <laughs> when in Molokhiya? <laughs> 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 because it looks like... It doesn't look like Molokhiya. Uh, the Abadan. It's yeah, like, I so love it. I don't mind to put it in our fanny broth menu. Um, to be honest, it's a delicious recipe. I did two versions where like one is like more like soup. And uh, it's blended with garlic, coriander, and then I serve it with hamour. Usually we eat it with, in, in, mainly in Levant with uh, onion and vinegar. Yes, correct. So I turn it also as a garnish. Thinly chopped. 100%. Yeah. The, others, uh, other, the other one, it was more Scandinavian. Let's say the inspiration when it comes to how I, if I keep the Molokhiya raw, how, how the taste would, will be. And it was good. And then I did it like more with like, you know, umami, dashi, molokhiya, it's more, you know, sophisticated. And both of them, they are delicious. But like, you know, from one ingredient, I did two <laughs> dishes that are different than each other's. And I feel this really speaks to the ethos of what you've done, which I, I honestly find, and I know many others find remarkable. Number one, when I look at Dubai, to start with, there was not, when we think about Arab food, Middle Eastern food, Middle Eastern ingredients, we think about typically more traditional restaurants, traditional Lebanese mostly, or Lebanese Syrian, etc., etc. And what you just said about the Molokhiya, I think, to me, summarizes some of your philosophy. You've taken a lot of these ingredients that come from this part of the world, the Levant broadly, call it the Mediterranean, 
and you are able to turn it into something different and without making it fussy because fussy yeah. is also not that interesting it's, it's messy like no it's, it's it's not fussy it's messy it's accessible but it has a huge amount of sophistication and a huge amount of flavor because of the ingredients. Yeah. Was this always your style? Because you were trained classically. I, re I really don't know. Okay. You need memories. I Correct. think, you know, most of the chefs, like, you know, they work and, you know, they're telling you, this is my style, this is the way I work, but it's, it's all about memories. So when it's come to the Molochie, like, the, the, the biggest challenge was for me, you know, uh, searching and content because I used to be a TV chef. So every right. every year I have a show, I have to, to, you know... Come up with new ideas. 100%. And then I start like thinking in, in different, let's say, perspective. Why I'm taking in these things and turn it to something different? What's both? And that, maybe the right, the, you know, the way we eat, this, let's say, things. Is it that correct? But I want to just stop here. What made you go in that direction? I mean, the easy direction is you can be an excellent, I'm going to push so a bit. So many inspiration. Yeah, yeah, you can be an excellent chef that yeah. does very traditional, beautiful dishes, and people will still love your food. Why did you feel you needed to take something? And as you said, I can see this in, in your work. It's like an artist. You know, you... You would, the memories matter, and the history matters, and I think, and, and this is going to something I want to cover in a little bit, but you were saying on your website as well, one of your blogs, that obviously being Syrian and that heritage of food is very important to you and is something you want to preserve, and that shows in some of your work, but what makes you want to shake it up? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. It's some, like in ideas. Some, like I told you, like you know, it was in searching content. I wanted, mm. I want to, I want to do something different than others. I don't mm. want to be like you know the the classic chef. Yes. Uh, I decide, you know, to do something modern. I did so many mistakes. Of course, we all did, and I learned from that mistakes. So first of all, don't play with traditional foods. Mm. Interesting. So if I call it, this is Molochia, where like people, they look at it visually. This is not Molochia. It's not Molochia. So that's why I call it, where is the Molochia? Yeah. <laughs> so there is no Molochia. Where is the Molochia? Yeah, yeah. Or where is my Molochia? Yeah. Walk us through that journey from a, a, a chef that's working in a hotel. What brought you to the Fatafit? How did that jump happen? That's a big jump. Well, it's a long story when it's come to, when it's come to the Fatafit. How did it start? It started like with one email. I sent it to Yusuf al -Dib. Who's a friend of the show and a friend of the lighthouse. You know, one of, of the, the masters, the mentor as well for me, like when it's come to, 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 you know, to be a TV chef. And so, where did he find you? It was, I don't like, it's Fatafit, it was in 2006. Mm. They start like, you know, promote the channel. And I felt like, you know what? I love that channel. So you applied. It start like you know. I, I'm a good researcher. I, I love. I love to you know to to do my research. I can you know? see that. So I did that, and then I found one Kuwaiti blogger. She said like you know there is a channel that's gonna happen soon. It's called Fatafit. It's something like Food Network in in US, and the only cooking channel in the Middle East. And it was something like for me. Wow! Finally, we have something like you know that in the, gonna be in Arabic. So I researched. I find an email. I took that email, I, you know, write down, hi, I'm, my name is Mohamed Rafali, I'm from Aleppo, and I used to work with a Shia group, and I would love to do you my- You were in Kuwait at the time? In, the, in the Kuwait. Yeah. And then I would love to do my cooking show. Uh, and that's it. Wow. You, ha you got the reply days, back? Yeah, seven days later on, and then I found like email from Yusuf al Deeb. <laughs> so like, oh, let's meet and uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to be in Kuwait. I don't know, remember the date, but let's, about. let's do like, you know, let's meet there. And then the first time I met Yusuf, and he looked at me. So what do you do? So I'm a chef. He looks like, yeah, I know you wear you wear a <laughs> chef jacket, and you came for the, you know. I was I was wearing chef jacket in that in that interview, and then he looked at me like, I don't know if you are good on camera or not, but sounds you are a chef, not a TV chef. And then he told me like, okay, write down uh, your idea. I'm going to have another interview with other chef, and then I will back to you. What did you think Yusuf saw in you? Out from your perspective, I was I was young in that time, and it felt like you know, Yusuf love, you know, the guys who have talent or like people who like want to do something. Yeah, no, you have the enthusiasm, but not everybody makes a shift from because to your point, I mean, yeah, TV chef, it's entertainment. It took from me five years to 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 join them. It took five years. Absolutely. Mm. He back to me and then say like he introduced me to the team, guys. This is the first chef we're gonna sign with us. 
and Muhammad will be, uh, you know, uh, in Dubai soon. And then I was like surprised and shocked what he's talking Amazing. about. He told me like he like he looks like a chef. He not be like, you not be. He looks like not the guy on the, on TV. And then he second uh, after half an hour to me like, oh, congratulations, let's sign the contract. <laughs> Now, you might remember that when I spoke to Fatafit founder Yusuf Adib, he talked about his mission to cultivate regional food talent under Fatafit. That mission led him to meet Orfali in Kuwait. You know, we had to have relevance. We didn't yes. want to be like Food Network. So Arab chefs. So we launched or Arab personnel. chefs, many, 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 like I, you know, about a dozen, let's say. And how did you go about to find them? Your guess is as good as mine. Sometimes it was just an email that we got, like um, Hamad Orfali was working as a chef in Kuwait. And I, one of my trips to Kuwait, I met him in the lobby of the Crown Plaza. And uh, <laughs> and you were like, sure, send me something. Let me see, let's do a test. And, you know, I, I flew in, I tell him on camera, and he expected like some big test. And I said, can you make an omelet? Because it wasn't about the food. It's about the personality. People don't watch the food, they watch the personality. They put the camera on in his hand and say like, okay, yalla, to, you know, cook. So like, what are they gonna cook? With no studio, huh? nothing. It just it was in a green room, and they start like, "Just talk. I want to see you like on the camera." And then like I start like, "Hi, how are you? My name is Mohammed Orfali. I'm gonna cook for you, Ajay, today." And, and like, "Yeah, perfect. Sign the contract." <laughs> and they like sign the contract. What? Like, is that true? Like, you know, Smile. I was at the I time. It. I don't understand Akeed. even like is that gonna happen or not. Akeed. So uh, I was a bit picky, and the good the good things, you know, I didn't start it with them immediately. It took from me four years, four to four, four five years to, to join Fatafit. What, what was the hesitation during that time? Yani, why didn't you join? I felt them? like I'm not ready to be on the camera. Okay. So you knew yourself. You need you to prepare more. I don't want to be, you know, again, other chef on TV. You wanted to be the chef on TV. Yeah, and talking about, you know, always this is food. This is the way we're making it healthy. It's easy. It's light. And I felt like. You know, like I want people like talk about more about food. Let's just make it more messy. Like, and you tell me about like how I eat this one, like in a good way. I don't want to look like you know to the chef on the on the on the camera. Tell me how to make the food healthy and light. What's very interesting is you know hardcore chefs would typically, I mean, TV to me is entertainment at the end of the 100%. day, right? So for you to be able to straddle these two. I know we're going to go back eventually starting your own restaurant. That's not very easy because 100%. I would imagine your average chef today that's very well known on television is not necessarily the same chef you want to open a restaurant. They know, it's true. You know, they learn to just be very theatrical, which is what's required on TV. I, I told you, I, I was not re much ready to be on TV. I don't have much information. And then I felt like I have to study more about who I am. And even in, in that moment, I don't know who I am. My food identity wasn't that clear. Yes, it was very interesting. And then the TV take me back to Aleppo because Yusuf is insist to be like, you know, you have to make your show, you have to make your show. Yeah. And I was like scared, like what do I have to do? Start going back to your roots. hundred percent. So I start like research, you know, do more research about my roots because in that time I was doing a Halabi restaurant. Sorry. It was a shaya. And then Yusuf, he thought like, you, you're so proud about your cuisine. And I think your show should be Anna Halabi. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, this yeah, is from Anna Halabi Halabi started, yeah. yeah. Anyway, emails goes vice versa with uh, Fatafit and Youssef. And I felt like, you know, I don't want to do, do it. And then he was super angry from me. Like, why? Like, you know, you don't want to be a famous Fatafit. So the time where, like, I was really, you know, confused. I don't know what I'm going to do, what I have to do, where I go. Because I want my plan was to go to work with Michelin star chef or go to France to, to continue. Thank like, God you didn't. I did, I did. Ah, oh, you did? Okay. I did, I did. I, like, come, I, I come back. Thank God you came back. <laughs> Self-thought chef, it's more stronger than you go to culinary school. Mm. Culinary schools are important. You need the basic, you need the fundamental. Mm. But once you're done from there, what are you going to do? You need you know, more food and, and chef and inspiration and memories and so many things like, you know, to build yourself. And then Yusuf decide like, you know what, let's do your cookbook first. Let's do Anna Halabi. And I felt like, okay, that's cool. And he told me like, your book will be the first show on, the, on, the, on, on TV. So make your book first and then we'll start with your cooking show. And when we did it, 2009, I cooked my cookbook in his house and we shoot it there. And then every every day, like, oh my God, look at that food. Man, you should make it a, your, own, your own show. Done. 
It's very interesting. He had very yeah. good commercial instincts, huh? Yeah. And then 2011, Yusuf came to me and listen, take it or leave it. And you took it. Yeah. Then join us as like you know executive chef of the channel. We want someone uh, with your experience to you know to. Uh, manage the, the operation of the studio. We're like, we have a kitchens, we have so many kitchens, we have a team, but we need a chef background to like, you know, to organize the, these things. And we have magazine, we have so many things to work with, like, you know, uh, to work on and uh, join us. How was that experience? It was for me like uh, disaster the first time. Kid, it's a very different like, experience. Very different experience. You're managing like, people you know, really more than anything else, yeah. Well, like no, but the different background. Mm. You know, like I'm I'm a chef. Where yeah, like yeah, I used yeah. to like you know uh, in your kitchen and do your food. My, but uh, I got people and then yeah, messy and studio and production and. So the time I joined them in 2011, the first show it was I remember that, and the first episode was on the 3rd of July, 2011. So people loved that show, and Halabi, I hate it. Because I felt like <laughs> it boxed I, you in. It was like you know, like the first experience for me. I was like really shy. I don't know what to do. Want to do like at that? They told me like you should not watch your shows until it's you know, we 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 complete the the shoot to the end. You know, you don't you need to watch anything. Yeah, yeah. It's like actors with their movies. I mean, you hundred percent. So yeah. I did that, and I promised them like you know, I'm not going to watch myself until like we finish. And then the, the first time I, I saw my face, my face in the camera, yeah, I started yeah, loving in the, my, in myself. <laughs> what, yeah, what I'm doing? Is that is that me? Is that is that yeah. right? What yeah, I'm yeah. doing? Yeah. But people loving it. They love it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, from there, we you know we, now we have 15 cooking shows. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. And are you still involved with them? Absolutely. Yeah. You still are. Yeah, yeah. And, and now that you have your own restaurant. I mean, you know, how, how do you manage? Well, just like when I back again, when I started with Fatafit as executive chef, mm. from a restaurant background to media business, it was, was like, oh my God, they don't, they don't, even like working in the office, I was like very confusion for me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but well, we did, you know, great job. You know, we work hard you know, on so many things and I used to work like, you know, uh, 12, 14, 16 hours sometimes per day. To a lot of yeah. people, that has been their first introduction to Arabic food, Arab chefs. You know, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they, they were really not, we didn't have these glossy cookbooks that you have in the US and in Europe. 100%. We didn't have, but this was an accessible way to understand. Even the shows. But that's what I mean. Yeah, and Yusuf have, like, you know, have the, Yusuf, Darin, they have the vision. Where we don't want to use gloves and it's an example. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, we're cooking Needs for hours. So, like, you have to be, like, real. Yeah. And then most of the cooking shows in Arab world, like, you see the chef wearing gloves and hairnet. I don't know why. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I feel like if you cook for yourself at home, you, you wear that. You don't thing. wear any of stuff. Absolutely. So, like, let's make it, like, more homey, more easy, more, like, you know, more real. And it was. And it was. And... It was for me, like, you know, uh, it changed my, my life. When we come back, I talk to Orfali about his evolution from TV chef to restaurateur and how his Syrian heritage and Turkish roots continue to inspire him. That's right after the short break. Welcome back. I'm Hesham Montasser, and you're listening to the Lighthouse Conversations with our guest, Mohammed Orfali. When I was doing my research, I can see very clear evolution and confidence rising, which is normal as, you, as you're getting more mature. But so you did it literally in front of the cameras. What did you learn from that period in your view? I mean, did it give you more confidence? Because when you're doing this live yeah. on a stage, it's very different than your chef that is cooking in a kitchen. So, so what did that teach you about yourself and about your... Um, evolution in terms of uh, being a chef. Look, uh, fr working in the front of the camera, it's an easy, it's a, and at the same time, it's not. Matbakh al Muasir, the, the modern cuisine in 2014, took from me one year of research, one year of research, mm. and experiment, and trial, and errors, and trials. Like, you know, so many things happen, uh, uh, you know, uh, because I want to do the Arabic modern way, and then I did so many, you know, experiment on, on, on Fatafid. So for the give me the give me like you know the opportunity to do that and you anyway, know I did I told you I did so many Akeed. mistakes. Akid, who doesn't? Yeah. But I'm wondering, did that give you the confidence to then start with your uh, brothers, your own restaurant? The fact that you felt at that point you had created a a formula. 
you know, for modern uh, um, Middle Eastern food, if you will, or modern Arabic food, because it's a very unusual formula. For me, well, our fire process is not modern that much. We're still like, you know. I think it's a, definitely it's, it's a modern easy. take on on yeah, a lot of dishes. So many, so many things, yeah. But this is the way, you know, I'll tell you something. We started from uh, our five Ross master classes. When, was, when I bring my brothers here, when they start like, you know, thing. It was a dream to be, uh, to be honest, to be together. Kid. And, and the first, the first thing is it was very difficult to work with the brothers as well. Because three I, brothers. Three well. brothers. And then different, you know, everyone have different perspective, you know. And different specialization, right? They, they are both of them into are, pastries. They're pastry and you do everything else. And we never worked together. Yeah. Until 2015, it's like I came up with something. They're so like, let's do something together. Let's do a master classes. Let's like, you know, uh, it's not going to be cost us that Are you much. the oldest? I'm the oldest. Okay, that helps. And then, <laughs> and that, but we're going to start it right. Mm. So I told him like, before we start, you know, to promote about our uh, master classes, we should film videos, we should make in things, we have to make, you know, like a small uh, booklet where like uh, the student who will come to our master classes will get like nice small book about, you know, the recipe, the, the pictures and everything. I was thinking like, you know, uh, the media background yeah, like, yeah. with like, you know, what you know, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then the time we <laughs> started filming the, the stuff and the, the recipe is like big fight. Between you? Between me and my brothers mm. because they are chefs mm. and Wasim is like uh, uh, very picky and then he want to do things like, you know, uh, mm. and he lets him to back. <laughs> He's picky and you're stubborn. <laughs> like, and like, no, I mean, no, I mean like, uh, we have, you know, we we book the studio. Yeah. We four days doing things, and then we have no content. You know, there is no content, and I want how we can promote it because it's I'll, like it's like a band coming together. Hundred percent. And then you start like you know, you have to listen to me. You have to focus, and let's do it one by one. We slowly start to come. Hundred percent. So the first the first one it was a bit difficult. Like you know, even like who's gonna talk? Who's gonna stop? Okay. Who's gonna do that? So we did it, and then we learned from that a lot. The first masterclass was really good and people loving it. And I felt like this is going to be something. So the second, the third, and we continue more and more. And then everyone asking us, why you guys, you don't have a Your restaurant, own restaurant. Mm. Or, uh, or, the, or, the, or the pastry boutique. And I would love to go and have coffee and your dessert or something. And so I started thinking about like, you know, why not taking this to to restaurant? What year did this idea come come to mind? 2017, okay. 18, or something like okay. that. And we decided to make it bistro. So we're like, you know, we have coffee and dessert, and at the same time we have food. For us, it's like or fatty broth, a, a modern. I don't want to see it Middle Eastern concept. I don't see it Middle Eastern concept. It's concert. not a Middle Eastern concept. Yeah, people like, okay, it's like he's taking an Syrian food with a twist, which is not. No, it's not Syrian twist, but like, as you know, people want to categorize, right? Yeah. I mean, people, it makes it easier for them. And this is like the biggest problem for yeah, us. Yeah, you know, they want to go to the Japanese restaurant. They want to go to the... 100%. And you guys fit enough for it to become Arab modern. The chef, no, it's a chef-driven concept. 100%. But you're doing what you like. Yeah. And then we serve the food that we love to eat. Uh, of course, we have to show people our root, you know, yeah. who, we, who we are, uh, at least with a few dishes. And that's what we did. Also, because you have now a history, I mean, and a documented history on television and so on. So I think people also took that into it. You know, there was already a history with your book, your shows, etc. Yep. that I think when you did the restaurant, people think of it as a continuation. I look at it as... All of that history was a platform to do something different. But the Kamanyu restaurant is new. Yani it takes a bit of time for... With the name of the restaurant as well. Masbol. When the people think Orfali, they, they think about Kebab Orfali. Exactly. Or like, you know, it should exactly. be like a Turkish Arabic or like a Syrian. Why did you decide to, to call it that, knowing I'm sure that this would happen? I mean, to your point, and talk us a little bit about how these names happen, like a name like Kebab Orfali, because I don't think people understand the history yeah. behind some of those names. Our name, you know, originally we are from Urfa, a city where like, belong to Turkey right now, where before it belonged to Syria. Our family, a bit famous. And then uh, after the Facebook happened, I find like we are a big family where like there is Orfali in Iraq, Orfali in Lebanon, Orfali in Syria, Orfali in Turkey, Orfali Egypt in, in, well. in Egypt, Orfali in Argentina, Orfali, I don't know, like it's big. <laughs> Lots of Orfali. Well, really like a big family. So the names come from Ufa, an artistic name, I don't know, it's Orfali, it has nice sounds. 
People they think it has a beautiful it's sound. Italian, Italian. But my point is, as you have said, and you say it yeah. on your uh, on your website as well, is that a lot of uh, dishes are named by yani or fali kebab, masalan. So so this is something. Uh, it's a it's a association that people have. It gives you that to a point. I mean, you know, Middle Eastern or Syrian. It's hard for you to see the name or fali and not think of that. Maybe for some people, that's what I'm trying to say. For Turkish, there are a bit confusion because uh, or fali with you, not with o. I see. So they don't see it that much Turkish. Uh, Lebanese, Syrian, they see it like you know kebab or fali, and both of us we don't know we know nothing about kebab or fali. <laughs> 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 really? They will ask me, like, what is kebab or fali? Just like meat and salt. <laughs> like the kebab halabi as well. Like, like, you know, like, what is kebab halabi? Uh, it's just meat and salt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, uh, simplify. Yeah. I love it. So, or fali is, is, you know, the sound is like uh, musical a little bit. And we call it prose because, like, the brothers. And uh, we still, so many people are asking us until now what type of cuisine you are. How do you describe it? You are chef driven concept, modern. We represent Dubai. We have food for everyone. And uh, to be honest, if you put yourself in one uh, cuisine category, you will limit it yourself. In our fabulous, we have no limitation. If I want to do mulukhiya, I can do mulukhiya. If I want to do Japanese things, I can do Japanese things. And you now, are. And the new, you menu, are yeah, the new menu is coming soon. There yeah. is so many things from, you know, uh, Spanish, Peruvian, yeah. and Korean. But even the current menu. Yeah. I, mean, I was there last week, and, and you know, it's really from all over. You're taking different concepts. We're making it, we're making it as much as we can, Orfali. So whatever we serve in Orfali Bros, only in Orfali Bros. There's so many directions I can see this brand in. It's a new brand, but mashallah, it's already built a great name and reputation. And to me, what I loved about it from day one, it sits on a solid foundation. It really is, does. That's what matters. So to me, and I was telling you, I don't see necessarily it has to be any. It could be, uh, or Fali Bros 15 locations, but it could also go in different directions because you have a media background, you have a very creative background. You guys do different things as, as brothers. How do you envisage this if I, if I would ask you to dream? If I gave you a blank check today? Let me take day off first and then we'll talk about <laughs> <laughs> Since we opened, I didn't date uh, one day off. La, I believe it. You have fat feet and then I see you every night, every time the, I'm there. The and all, all my friends when they're there, you're there. The only seven days I took, it was like I had COVID and I stayed at home. But yeah. it wasn't that really good to think about so talking, something yeah. else. We are busy, like, you know, we're getting busy more and more. And then I don't know what I'm going to do. Really, I, I'm like, I'm thinking about myself, what I can do. For the, for the future, yeah. Um, I don't think Sour Fibros will be two and three or mm. somewhere else. Uh, we think our Fibros will be one and only. If I want to do something else, it will be different concept, different name. Is it because you don't want to? I, I I think with you, one of the things, and I'm sure your brothers as well. It's the creativity and wanting to change. Yeah, and you told me you've changed the menu three times already since you opened. Yes. And number four is coming soon. Num yeah, you told me. This is very unusual. Yeah, yeah. People don't, and it's not because it's not working. Not completely, completely, but we, you know, because the, f the first time, yeah, I did, I did it like, you know, completely, but people get angry from us because he bring his mom, his wife, yeah. his girlfriend to try something and then it's not in the menu. I came when, we f when you first opened and I came last week and there was 20, 30% the same, but yeah. a lot of new dishes and, and a lot of things that were removed. You think because of maybe uh, your TV experience, you feel the need to constantly create? Or is it, w what drives this constant change? Sometimes like, you know, regular customers, like, you know, if, they're, if you've been there like for five, six, seven, eight times, you need something new. Oh, but to make specials. With my small kitchen, a small mm. restaurant, it's, hard. it's really hard to do that. Really, really hard. I think you also like to create new things yeah, all I the wanna, time. I, 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 will, I will tell you something. This is, what, this is our minimum. What we're doing in our five rows, um, this is my minimum. The limitation that we have in that concept, the space. Mm. And we try to do, you know, to be smart. Uh, I try to be, you know, to minimize my wastage. I have zero waste, almost zero waste. I manipulate the ingredients and different technique, different things. You like to have like one ingredient. Choose everything. 100%. And then I have like only two single fryers, one single grill. Yeah, I see it. For gas burner and my, my pizza oven is like only for one P day. 
what I can do in that concept. And then we serve in the same time, you know, sometimes 30 to 40 people. But that probably gave you a certain discipline as well. Right? 100%. We I remember our first kitchen here, Sorry about that, was a tiny kitchen. And I have to say, I was very proud of, of our chefs because they made it work. And it's challenging. It remains challenging until today. But it gave a certain discipline that I think if we had told them here, you have everything. Yeah. It's harder to do. I'm sure you would love to have a bigger kitchen next time or a different Absolutely. concept. Absolutely. <laughs> By the way, my, my kitchen bigger than my dining room. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think the, the first kitchen yeah. in Dubai were like my kitchen bigger than dining room, but still small. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. For the next concept will be bigger kitchen. It's more bigger kitchen like give you like, you know, storage time. You know, like everything is not about kitchen. Storage, no, no, kitchen, efficiency, space. And, uh, production. Yeah, you can do th different things. If you have, imagine like if I have, Charcoal grill and or fibros will do so many things, but I can't do it right now. Talk to me a little bit about what you said earlier about marrying your menu with your desserts. Desserts in Dubai is a tricky concept because I think there's a certain understanding of what people like. 100%. And, and uh, I, we, at least my experience has been it can be challenging. And you come... Not only the dessert, the food as well, the, the menu, well. like, you know, like... The, the food as well, Akid. Everything is challenging. Yeah. But I want to zoom in desserts because it's a specialty, obviously, that you guys have. And your brothers are classically trained in terms of their desserts. What, how have you managed to, to work out this challenge? You know, of people wanting more kind of simple things, if you want to call them that, you know, in some ways, yep. the simple pies, etc. And then you're doing something a bit more um, sophisticated, let's call it. It goes over people's heads. And we try as much we can to not have the same thing, the same cliche, let's say, that you find it in everywhere in Dubai. Mm. And then we try to match also what people do want. Mm. And then we know it's now, like, you know, like the pistachio one, the test of Aleppo, this, like, you know, everyone loving it. Yeah, absolutely. I love uh, it. Very rare to find, like, you know, someone who say like, oh, I didn't, it's not my style. The chocolate one was great as well. Chocolate one, definitely. You know, everything. Even the food. Imagine, like, 160, 160 nationalities or more. Yeah. We're like, they're going to come and dine in your restaurant. Like your famous burger. I don't think it was on the menu when you first started. It wasn't. wasn't. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the burger was like, you know, a bit challenging for me. Like, yeah. you know. Uh, and it's become I, now, I, you I, know. I really don't want to serve burger in the restaurant. I'm sure you didn't. Most like, chefs from, don't. From my, from my heart, like, you know, like, I, I want to I stop doing burger. But, but uh, your customer wants it. But I think the they might, they might no, come no, after the, you today if you try to take the burger away. The, the corn avocado salad, the mexicana. Yeah. And uh, the cheeseburger saved my business. It's incredible, huh? Yeah, this is the reality. But I love that about you. Yani, honestly, there is a pragmatism. Yani, other chefs, frankly, because you called yourself stubborn, and I disagree. Because another chef I'm would not, say, <laughs> I'm, not, you know say I'm not stubborn. And when, when it's come to the business and certain things, I'm stubborn in my ideas. Like, but, okay, but if yeah. you were really but stubborn, I'm flexible. When it's come, like, you know. If you were not flexible, you yeah. could say, you know what? I don't care what they want. I don't want to do a burger. I'm not going to do a burger. If that's what they want, you will add it to the menu of because it sells. It's, yeah, a business, but it's a business at the yeah. end of the day. And you constantly have to find this balance. And I think it's burger bring everyone on the table. Like, like if because the menu, uh, the naming of the of my or the you know the items in the menu, bit some of them not familiar. So they go to the burger because they know that it's gonna be familiar. So, familiar. Let's say like let's have a burger. It's easy. And we try like as much we can, you know. There are so many things on the menu that it has weird name, like guess what? And no one ordered it. Unless like you go to the, the table till I'm like, you have to try this. It's good. It's amazing. Please give it a try and then let me know how, how it's going to be. And some people, even like I reached to the point, like, you know, if you don't like it, guys, don't pay. Just try it. But your give staff does an amazing job, by the way, by explaining. Yeah. Uh, and it's challenging because, as you said, you have things on the menu that is not, it's not obvious. It's not like cheeseburger. Yeah. And it needs explanation, it needs context. And they really do a great job, in my view, putting together that context. So that if you are curious, like someone like, you, like me, I want to try new things. I, I'm coming to, you know, the burger is fantastic, don't get me yeah. wrong. But I so, said, no, I'm coming because I know how talented you are and I want to... But if they don't give me the context, yani the storytelling element is very important and, and you do it really well. This is like what, like, or fibros. We tell story. Yeah. We get, you know, let people to get inspired. And we get inspired of them from, from, from others. And I don't want to just serve the food on the table and you know, go eat. No, let, we tell you how that works. Because when you say you, like, one other example, Imam Bayalde. Imam Bayalde, the Imam vein, like, you know, the, the famous... Uh, almost like national Turkish dish, yeah. where it's not Imam Bayalde. 
But I love I like the way we plated or like uh, presented as Imam Bayadi, but it's not Imam Bayadi. So I have to tell you the story, wh- how that's come from, where they, you know, how story we did it. Story is fantastic. You told me the story. So like, and then I would, I'm gonna turn it to Orfali Bayadi because I, <laughs> because it's delicious <laughs> and and I fall down because for, with the first bite. We, we make it more personal. Yeah. Our food has personality. That's why I have to be there. That was going to be my question because. You had said earlier that you think, you think, you never know, but you think it'll be one or Fali Bros. And I was going to ask you, if you are not there, do you think it would work the same way or not? If Hashem comes in, I don't know the owners, I don't know the Orfali brothers, I don't know. I just went to a restaurant that I heard is really good. And you have your team, let's say a, a manager. Would you think it would, or do you feel the, that you have to be there yourself? In the beginning, yes. Now I, I have the confidence to say the team that can, can take on. Take, of course, that's great. That's course. a great uh, testament. And I don't to know if you realize that or not. We are we are all wearing the same things, so you don't know who's the manager, who's the waiter, who's the bathroom, who like who's the chef. They are like they are all all yes. same. Yes. And and that's what makes my concept different. You know, like sometimes the manager goes to your table and you think like he's like one of the waiters. He's not. He's the manager. And uh, they are very well trained. And then every day we spend hours, like, you know, how to tell a story. And then now the time that the guys ask me, like, if, what if, like, one of the table, like, they are regular customers and they, they have been there more than, than three, four times. We have to tell them. Tell them your story. <laughs> <laughs> Why is storytelling so important? To is it because food is emotional? Absolutely. It's make it different. Like, imagine, like, I serve you something, you know, no, nothing about it, and it looks like something different, and then you eat it, you don't, it's confusing you. So like for us, fusion is very confusion. This is like the biggest challenge for us to tell people we are not fusion. Yes. They, they still think like, or fatty bros, a modern yeah, fusion. Yeah, fusion. Or was it twist? Which is not. The word it's twist like, is it's, it's, very, it's very personal. You know, I think of it, I, I collect art, and I collect yeah. um, um, Arab art and um, contemporary modern art, mostly. And your, it reminded me the first time of some of the artists that I love, who, you know, and there's many, but yeah, I'll mention a few, you know, Akram Zantari and Hasim Harb and others. And they took, many of them work with archival images. They take them, they manipulate them, they appropriate them, and they change them into a piece of art that's theirs. Yeah. I felt very much the same feeling, honestly, at your restaurant. You took the ingredients, you took, in some cases, maybe a, an existing dish or not. You took it, you appropriated it, you molded it into your own view and created something that's more than one plus one equals two. Very powerful. Honestly, very, very powerful. 100%. We do not reinvent the wheel. I think you're creating your own language. I, I like Japanese way when they took things and they, they perfect in it yeah. a little bit. So like the each one, the, the, the spicy burger tabbouleh, the one we eat it with yes. the leaves. It's an, uh, I don't know how long, this recipe I think belonged to Assyrian culture. We're talking about 600 years old. And then Turkish, they have it. Syrian, we have it. Armenian, we have it. And how we can bring them all together and we, we make food no more war. But also I work on the textures, I want like an, an intensity of uh, the chilies there and then how I, can, how I can add more umami on it. So our, my food and all our desserts, we're talking about layers and textures and seasoning. And that's what makes it different. Do you care about the fact that some of these ingredients are precious ingredients? Many of them come from places, including Syria, that may no longer be able to produce them. I mean, this came up when we went to see you for dinner. We're talking about pistachio and others. Is there maybe a subconscious element of preserving, you know, things that you feel may no longer be here? I mean, a lot of these places, Syria, Lebanon, we can name many, unfortunately, this part of the world, that are now at war and conflict. And I remember thinking, you know, this may not be, you were talking yourself about how difficult it is today in the supply chain to get some of these crops. Is that something that that matters to you? Of course. Or would you just easily uh, replace uh, Syrian pistachio for... Another country. I can, if you I can go it. more in a more closer. Like if it's not available, I go to the Turkish one because it's you know the closest one to us. And, and then for us, as you know, restaurants should be consistent. And this is like what is important because every time you have to come back and then eat the same things. So if the, we don't find the, the pistachio from Aleppo, we can get it from Antap, the Turkish one. Sometimes I use alternative things from Turkey. 
where like they are very close to to Halab, exactly for Halab. You know, I'm talking about the the cities were like you know uh, very close to us, which is Antab, Urfa, Marash. This is the where like we can get nice ingredients almost very close to Halab. Does it bother you that in in Halab today or in Aleppo you you are having this issue of not being able to produce? Absolutely, absolutely. I would love to like you know. My our dream to you know to back to Syria and and do our uh, academy there, where like you can find everything. The landscape has so many things to offer. To be honest, four seasons, richness of soil. Yeah, if you if you tell me like what is your dream, I will back to Syria one day, and I open my culinary school there and or Fali Bros Academy. It's not big, just about you know uh, working or like uh, preparing a new generation of chefs. No, it's about sustainability mm. back again to the roots back again to like where the ingredients came from and this is very, uh, very important things so many changes from this world they think about technique and how he can make my food uh, different textures and so much sophisticated things but they forget where the ingredients came from why don't we open open the orfanli bros academy here and bring young syrians and lebanese and egyptians and others and teach them i mean i'm saying this as an interim why step yeah, why I mean, not we did why? it we, you know we, we st- as orfanli bros business we started as master classes and academy. exactly yeah. that's exactly why one not? way of why it. not why not why not um, i would love to just to show what is out there, show these people also there's possibilities. Absolutely. And then Dubai, uh, you know, I don't know if you noticed that. Back to, you know, old days where like, we have, you know, the good thing about Dubai, you find everything. Yeah. Supply chain here is like, yeah. one, of the, one of like very solid. Very strong, yeah. If you need something from Japan, I remember like when I did a pop with Tare, I did, uh, I, I ordered my sea urchin, uh, second days, like, you know, two days production, <laughs> you know, who, who, where we can find that. But the same things, you know, the local produce yes. is getting better. I use, look, listen, my ingredients sourced from Dubai. You're from able UAE, to find. 100%. Interesting. I pay more. But you're getting the quality you want. You know, the, 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 the organic cucumber, 30 dirham per kg. Wow. But you're... What, I'm so, happy like, because I find it like it's del- more delicious and... Uh, and sustainable. 100%, and then the second thing is that support the farms. Then the, the same time where and my ingredients has some energy because we believe food, there is there is energy in ingredients. So when it's like the ingredients travel more than 100 miles, it lose that energy. Is energy different than nafas? Nafas is a big word, like, you know, time, <laughs> Europe, <laughs> It's a very time, big like, word. Nafas, That's a whole different it, it, podcast no, that we should do. No, no, boss. But I'm, I'm interested to hear your view on that. Of course, because boss. We like, all, all believe in nafas, right? Nafas means, for me, uh, one thing, energy. Mm. We're like, imagine like your mom cooking for you just to feed the kids. We're like, she just like, you know, it's a job. We're like, she's more than, than happy. We're like, the other mom, we're like very happy, very curious to make it like more delicious. And she yeah. eat half of the, you know, of that meal until like the kids try it because she season it, she work on it. So it's energy. My mom was definitely the first one. By the way. She <laughs> definitely was just Absolutely. feeding the kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> but I think like if she... Uh, a different, like you know, from from, from mom to other mom. Where, no, like, no, she's, I hear you. you know, she's like come back from the work. She's you know, ah. she spent whole day and then just want to feed. Also. And you feel that translates into your hundred percent. So energy is important because you add more energy, more more effort. And then for me, nafas is about seasoning. Interesting. There are so many moms. They know how to cook, and at the same time, she match flavors and ingredients together and make her food delicious. But seasoning is which is the most important things. What does mean seasoning? She try half of the you know she she eat half of the meal before like you know serve it to her kids or to her to her guest, where like she balance everything the sweetness, the sourness, the salt, the the umami like you know like that is this is nafas for me. So that's why when I cook in the restaurant I don't eat because I keep trying everything. Mm. And they keep like eating from morning until evening, one bite one from there, one spoon from there, one thing from there. And then I feel like, mom, I eat so many <laughs> things. But this is nafas. So energy, l- lot of efforts and seasoning. I think that's uh, the best definition I've heard of nafas. I'm going to Yanni, stop here. I don't think we can top that. <laughs> Muhammad, we wish you the best of luck, you Thank and your you. brothers. Congratulations. Honestly, we're very proud of what you've done. Inshallah, a lot more to come.
Thank and you. Uh, next time when we get together, it will be in your academy. Well, I, I, I really want to do it. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Like, and I would love to support it if I can. The most challenging things for me from where I came, you know, 1994 when I started my culinary school was different than now. The, 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 the words change. You know, like I was really suffering and then struggling to find content, to find uh, uh, information. There is no internet. There is no social media. There is no cookbook. I don't speak English in that time. And I think that level of excellence needs to be preserved, which is why to me in academy, it does two things. One, you set this bar, uh, this bar high, which you already have. Two, you give possibility to a lot of people that don't have this possibility today. And one more thing, where like most of the culinary school, they teach you a French curriculum. Correct. And they forget, you know... Everything else. The, the mother cuisine, you know, my cuisine. Yes. So why have to learn... Uh, French cooking, and I don't know, I know nothing about Halabi cuisine, an example. 100%. I agree 100%. And, and that's what is needed here. 100%. Because like, food is identity. And personality. And then if you know... Memory. Your, memory History. and everything. Yeah, of course. And I would love to. That's why I'm telling you, like, if you want to back to, you know, to Syria, we'll do, we'll do our academy there just to tell people like, what we have. An incredible history. But no one knows about them. I agree. They become like hidden gem or like... An we don't want it to be hidden gem. I mean, it needs, yeah. to, it needs yeah. to be out there. Yeah. Now it's on the record, so we're going to have to do it. Awesome. <laughs> Inshallah. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the Lighthouse Conversations with me, Hashem Montasir. We're produced by Chirag Desai and our content director is Farah Sharif. If you've enjoyed this episode, please follow us on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. Also, feel free to browse our extensive collection of previous episodes, which you can find on any of your podcast players, including Apple and Remy, Spotify and Google Podcasts. You can find us on Instagram at thelighthouse underscore AE or send us an email at connect at thelighthouse.ae. And please share a link with your friends if you've enjoyed this episode. We'll see you again in two weeks.